Hi, my name is Dana and I'm an educator with the Virginia Aquarium and today we're going to talk about space rocks. Now I know that sounds a little unusual to talk about here at the Virginia Aquarium, but actually the Chesapeake Bay was influenced by an out of space impact about 35 million years ago. All right? I'm actually going to lead you on how to go outside of your home or your school and look for micro meteorites. Now what is a meteorite? Well, as Earth orbits around the sun, it actually passes through debris all the time, rocks and ice. Sometimes those rocks enter our atmosphere, and when that happens, it becomes classified as a meteor. Now, a lot of times, as those meteors are traveling through our atmosphere, they explode because of all the friction that occurs when they pass through air molecules. Can you make friction with your hands like this? Yeah! So those, uh, that friction actually breaks up a lot of the meteorites that enter, or meteors that enter our atmosphere. However, if that meteor were to touch down on Earth's surface, it then becomes classified as a meteorite. Now, did you know today, even today, thousands of micrometeorites land on our planet all the time, all locations. Micro means small, so these are very, very tiny and sometimes hard to find, but you can actually go outside and locate them. All right? So to find uh, micrometeorites, these are the materials you're going to use. All right, so I've got a dust pan, I've got a broom, a sheet of paper, a used plastic bag, a magnet, and a magnifying glass. All right, so these aren't materials that are too difficult to find. Now, why do you think we'll need a magnet? Well, here I actually have a meteorite that we have here at the Virginia Aquarium. Um, it's actually very heavy. Why do you think it might be heavy? What do you think it's made out of? Well, a lot of meteorites contain iron, and iron is magnetic. It's also very dense, which is why it's so heavy. Can you name the other two naturally occurring ferromagnetic materials? Think about it. Actually, iron, nickel, and cobalt. Those are your three. So a lot of meteorites actually contain iron, and knowing that, we're actually going to use magnetism to help us find our micrometeorites. So, just got to run through the experiment, right? I've got my magnet. I actually have two different magnets. Let's see if they attract. They sure do. So uh, this is a meteorite that is rich in iron. So what I'm going to do is actually go outside and collect some uh, soil or sand that I find outside. Now let me show you a, or share with you a tip on where to find really good micrometeorites. Micrometeorites tend to fall along with rain and they travel with rain water runoff. So when you go outside, you want to collect sand and soil samples that are located around where water tends to pool. So a great place to look are where your gutter drains kind of exit into the yard. If you collect some of that soil, that's a great place to look. Another great place to look is along the curb of your sidewalk outside of your home or your school. You collect that sand and I'll show you a technique on how to isolate the micrometeorites or the magnetic material from the sand, All right? So I'm gonna go outside in our parking lot here at the Virginia Aquarium. I'm gonna look for places where maybe water might have pooled after a rain we had a couple days ago. I'm gonna collect that sand and I'll come right back in and I'll show you how to isolate and extract the micrometeorites from the sand. So I just came back in and I went outside to our parking lot right outside the Virginia Aquarium and I collected some sand that was in our parking lot. Now if you're doing this experiment at home or at school and maybe you want to turn it into a science project, it might be a really good idea to try different locations. And if you're trying different sampling locations, it's a good idea to label and separate those. That way you can find a location that has a higher yield, and you know that maybe next time if you want to collect micrometeorites or go on a space rock scavenger hunt, um, you know where to look that tends to lead to a good amount of micrometeorites. So what I'm going to do is actually transfer uh, my soil here to this paper. That's going to help me separate it. Get a nice thin layer here. Now what I'm going to do is actually take my used bag here, and I'm going to drop in a magnet. I have two different magnets here. Although this one's smaller, it's stronger. So this is a neodymium magnet. It's more powerful than my bar magnet. So I'm going to try this one first. I'm just going to drop this into my bag. All right. And what I'm going to do is actually pass this over my sample that I collected. And we know that anything that is magnetic, like our micrometeorites, 
are going to attract to my magnet and they're actually going to adhere to the outside of my bag. So look at that, that's a lot. That's great. So I'm gonna let that rest right here, okay? I'm gonna get my sheet of paper and what you wanna do is actually fold it in half like a taco. All right, and you're gonna open it back up. You're gonna transfer your bag over your sheet of paper, maybe right in the middle where the crease is at. You're gonna reach in very carefully and you're going to remove the magnet, all right? And when I remove the magnet, what happened? It released all that magnetic material, right? So that's a lot to go through. So not all of that is actually a micrometeorite. However, there's a good bit of it, there's a good chance that what's in here is actually a meteorite. To help you kind of figure out what is what, it helps if you have a magnifying glass. Now remember, when meteors travel through, travel through our atmosphere, they get bombarded by all those air molecules, and that friction that we did uh, helps form a nice perfect sphere if they were to touch down on planet Earth. So when you look through your magnifying glass, you wanna look for something that's really, really shiny and a perfect sphere. Magnification is gonna help, so that's why we have our lens here, a magnifying glass. If you happen to have a microscope, that's gonna be even better. You might have one at home, it's possible. And I can see some very shiny flecks in here. They almost look like glitter, it's really pretty. I'm actually gonna get a flashlight. This will also help too if you pass this over your sample. I can see all kinds of shiny, glittery looking objects and I know those are micrometeorites. So like I said, you can try this in multiple different locations. So you can collect your own space dust, if you will. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna give you an engineering challenge if you wanna do this. While this is pretty cool, very simple setup, magnet in a plastic bag, you can get creative and maybe design your own tool to separate micrometeorites or space rock from sand. This is one that one of our educators made here at the Virginia Aquarium. You can see it's household items, right? A spoon, uh, a clothespin, a um, popsicle stick and a magnet here. And what's so cool about this one, all you have to do is just pass the spoon over your soil sample and you'll see that it attracts to the bottom of your spoon. You hold that over and to release it, you pinch this in, it lifts the magnet and your magnetic material, your uh, micrometeorites fall down that way. So that's pretty cool. That's an engineering design challenge you can uh, try. You can get really creative with it. We folded the crease in the paper, so maybe if you wanna keep your space dust in a maybe container or a vial that you have, you can pour it that way. What I did over here, um, I just put a piece, piece of tape over my micrometeorites and that I can save and keep. So I hope you enjoy that. You can go outside, look for some micrometeorites, it's very fun. So I like to end this video with a cosmic coastal connection that we have. So about 35 million years, a meteor that was two miles in diameter, traveling at 70,000 miles per hour, slammed into a region that we currently call the east coast of Virginia. So underneath the Chesapeake Bay, there's actually a crater, which is a footprint that a, a meteorite leaves behind. There's a 50 mile crater that's underneath the Chesapeake Bay. How cool is that, all right? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you go out and hunt for micrometeorites, make sure you share it with us. Tell us what you find. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. My name is Dana and I'm with the Virginia Aquarium.